Hi there folks, welcome to my Global Digital School of Art where I am just about to get underway with part three of my tutorial on how to tackle very young faces. Now I will pick up where I left off but in order for you to catch up I would suggest that you go down to the um, bottom left of your screen where you will see my name just below it and my image press on that and that will bring you to my art channel um, where you can catch up on part one part two and one or two other odds and ends which you may find of interest to you which has in actual fact brought us to this point right now I'm going to zoom this back so that you can see the overall picture um, it does look a little odd <laughs> I've got a pair of eyes looking at me uh, from this piece of paper uh, and a mouth which is uh, about to speak and make complaints the fact that she's got no hair right so on this section hopefully I will be able to complete what I've already started. When I say hopefully, this is very challenging and it is very complex. And as I said from word one, this is going to take as long as it takes. Because as a tutor, it is not my place to leave you second guessing. So therefore, I'm giving you all sorts of information on my thinking as I go and from that you can decide whether or not there is any value in it and you make your own decisions because this is not about me this is about you your painting and how you feel about your paintings all I'm doing is giving you information on which you can turn around in your mind, take the bits you want, chuck out the bits which have no value to you, okay? So, cut the chat, Barry. Let's get the brushes wet. Right, now I've picked up my palette with uh, my umber and my ochre on it. Uh, that was the wash which I put on my first gentle wash on the eyebrow. And I've selected one of my older brushes here um, which look it hasn't got any point on the end of it so I'm going to now dry brush the eyebrow right now it is not easy to dry brush a wash but it is possible and look what I'm going to do I've got a piece of paper here I'm going to put my wash on it which has taken off most of the actual water and then I'm going to dry brush. I'm going to zoom that in even closer if the camera will allow me to. There, right, you can just about see it there. And dry brush that eyebrow. Now, when you're dry brushing, do not keep going back over that same area. You need to move away because if you stay on that area, it will get wet and you'll lose your dry brush effect. I have shown you a little bit of dry brushing on one or two of my earlier videos. Right now, I've turned the um, my board at an angle to make myself comfortable. <laughs> I've got the gel on my hair so it doesn't get in the way this time and I'm going to start dry brushing. Look, um, it, it's almost feather, feather painting. And look, I'm going to stop for a moment because if I keep going, that will get too wet. Right, 
and while I've got that dry brush look I can just soften these eyelashes a tag game of patience this one because you can't see on the first stroke what is actually happening Look, I'm coming back on this one now and I'm dry brushing in the direction of which the hair grows I'm now going to turn my board around there we are and I'm just going to dry brush the edges and that is giving me a slightly softer appearance to it now bearing in mind look we're once again we're talking about a young child um, they haven't reached the stage where they're going to start plucking their eyebrows so they can be a little bit on the fuzzy side turning my board back again because uh, I need the brush in the direction of that which the hair tends to grow and on this lower section it tends to grow up and on this uh, upper section it tends to go down almost like a herringbone effect And on this section, it tends to be a little bit deeper. Right, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to go back to the other eyebrow. Right, now I've, I've just picked up a little bit of water there, by the way. And I'm going to soften that down on the end there. A little bit flying away there, go and get the tweezers and pull that out. Uh, look, you may find what I've just done very difficult, certainly um, in the early stages. And on my last uh, section, I was showing you the, uh, the alternative on the eyelashes. Look, you can see the difference between that dry brushing now on that eye as to, opposed to this eye. So I'm going to have to dry, dry brush this one as well. But I was showing you the alternative, and I'm going to show you this alternative again uh, on my actual painting uh, uh, this time. Right now, I've I've come back here with a um, a watercolor pencil, and look, I can. The paper is dry, by the way. And I'm very, very gently ticking away on the eyebrow. And I will slowly build that up. In order to get it just a little bit darker, just here, look, I've got a slightly darker one. Right now, that works um i've also got because the other on this one i had a uh, uh ochre involved look i've got an ochre watercolor pencil so once i've built that up and i've got what i think i actually want what i will do is i will get clean fresh water and I don't want to drag it around all over the place I'm going to take it over there once leave it to dry off look it's, you can just see it, it's beginning to fuse in there Okay, so that is um, an alternative 
uh, which you've got if you feel a little bit insecure with the brush. I have lifted that eyebrow off um, because I'm getting odd eyebrows and look I've been and dry brushed that piece. I was going to do that dry brushing uh, on the end while I was ticking but I've now got odd eyes so I'm now going to have to dry brush this eyelashes. Okay, right, um, now you can start to see why I said uh, this is going to take as long as it's going to take because I have no way of knowing actually what's going to happen uh, once I start painting. Right now, this eyebrow, I cannot dry brush this one in just yet because it is still too damp. So I will need to come back to that one. I'm going to start off once again by wetting my paper. Okay, look, I've used a big brush. Um, if you haven't got one, don't panic. Look, I can use my number eight brush. Just takes me a little longer. And I don't want to stay on here too long because if I keep mixing this yellow and the blues up, I'll end up with green, right? So instead of a, should look, start looking like a green bean. Right, now I'm now going to come back with my pale yellow even though there's pale yellow already on there just make sure there's no great big puddles because I don't want them to run away into the face uh, play safe there we go and here I come with my yellows and look I'm twisting my brush I'll use my big one you can see that a little better it's got the tag on it All right, I'm twisting it I'm changing the weight in other words pressing down on here and when I did the actual flesh tones, I took the flesh tones way above the hairline um, because I can always block it out where it's much more difficult if I run a little bit short to try and get the flesh back up there. And if I wander out a little bit too, too far out, look, I've, you can hear me hitting my water and I'm just rolling my brush back in to make sure it doesn't she's got fly away hair but I want it on her head right now I'm now going to come back with my ochre and drop ochre in now this is uh, this is nice um, because you can be a little a lot more relaxed uh, but having said that you still need to be fairly focused but this is giving me now a chance to practice the direction of the actual hair um and what i'm going to say is going to sound very daft but i have to say it um because i say daft things the hair starts off on the top of the head right? uh, so therefore the bits which you are seeing in front here didn't necessarily grow in the front they might have grown a couple of centimeters back um, but you need to keep that in mind all the time because sometimes every now and again I come across a painting where even even loose hair doesn't really look as though it belongs on the same head and 
these areas around the back, the hair obviously grew from around the back, so they will tend to come around, okay? Or if not around, they will not be in front. So even here, we've got um, thinking going on. Odd thinking maybe, but we've got thinking going on about what it is we're doing and how we're trying to achieve it. Now look, in this particular case, uh, uh, it's very, very early there. So look, I, I don't have to worry too much. But uh, on standby, I've got a chisel end brush. Um, and I can use that. In other words, if something is coming through a little bit stronger and I just want to ease it off, look, I can just hit it with a little bit of water twist my brush and eased it off but I want these streaky little bits in here at the moment so I'm not going to knock them out because it's like I said this there is underpainting going to be going on here and the other thing is and once again it is important where the hair comes out and leaves the head it will throw a shadow so it will be a gentle shadow but it will still be a shadow so under here when I do the hair I will be dropping back my faint um, soft blue warm blue grey shadows But there is only so much planning you can do on, on this one. You have to get, you have to make a start. Uh, and then some bits will go well, some bits will not. Okay, so look, she's now getting hair. And I'm starting to look at the eyes in relationship to the hair there. Right, while it is still wet, I can knock up just a little bit of my burnt sienna and a little bit of umber I've been talking too long it's uh, got a little skin on it okay there we go and what I'm uh, going to do is I'm just going to flash on a little bit of this and then I'm going to stop and let it dry it, it, it may appear as though I could actually continue on and do the hair all in one hit but that is not the case because I need to stop look and think and stop running away so having done this I'm off for another cup of tea <laughs> then I'll come back and actually have a look uh, and start painting with my eyes before I start painting with my brush That's it. Cup of tea. Right now I've uh, had my cup of tea and refreshed my bowl of water. And I'm about to run this water now around the edge of that t-shirt. Up into the hair a little way. And the reason I've actually changed my water is because the, I didn't want it contaminated with the ochres and the yellows uh, I had on there uh, because unless you keep changing your water never mind about the colour you actually end up with a mud effect so 
changed my water and just about to lift off the big puddles because I don't want it running into the actual t-shirt just yet and look I've got yet another plate here and on this I've got ultramarine and alizarine in other words crimson and I'm going to turn that one to a wash now everything here is about wash 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 wet 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 there we go right now I need a large brush so I'm going to use my one with a tag on it pick up just a little bit of water get my palette out of the way zoom in so you can see what I'm doing and look I don't want a smooth uh, clean um, uh, wash on there so what I'm doing is look I'm dobbing it down because I want it slightly mottled right I've just picked up a little bit of uh, fresh water and just easing it up to the top there now a little bit more wash I'm going to move that over just in case you can't see it and I'm it's getting weaker as I'm getting up higher that way I get that lovely sort of mottled effect and my board is I'm laying it almost flat here because I don't want it, the gravity to drop it all down to the bottom so I'm working at a very very strange angle I can't get over the top of the board because then I'll get in the way of the camera could have been just a little tag warmer so I'll just put in a little bit more crimson in there chances are too much because I'll be in a rush there we are that's just killed up Killed it off just a little bit. Oh, you can't see. There you, go. you can just see it there. Actually, I quite like that uh, little bit in there, so I'm going to put a little bit in the other side if it's not too late. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's a little bit warmer. quite like that. Right now I'm going to leave my board on the flat. Don't need another cup of tea at the moment. <laughs> I, I de just dare not tip my board up uh, so that you can actually see what I've got. I'm going to let that dry off to damp in other words so it doesn't doesn't roll around everywhere look you can start to see look I'm starting to counterbalance the eyes now um, everything's still wishy-washy but I'm just going to leave that to dry to damp my uh, little mottled background is now dry and I'm about to put on yet another little wash on here and I will be using my uh, ultramarine along with my crimson but I've made it just a little bit warmer this time now just have a look here look this is my little collection of palette plates and 
it is a useful way of making sure that you come back with the same colours when you come to um, go back on something. Right now, once again, fresh water. I've gone over a little bit over my background here as well. And I need to do this because I'm going to have hair. And hair will automatically throw a shadow of sorts, albeit a soft shadow. So I know it's going to come in around this section here. And I need to get this in before I start putting the hair on. Um, because I won't be able to put the shadow around the hair without disturbing the hair. So I flush that on. And this is also uh, getting rid of a little bit of this competitive white. When I say competitive white, it is competitive from the point of view of the um, teeth and the eyes. So look, I've gone in just a little bit deeper down on this side. And I'm going to knock this out because there is going to represent folds, but I can't be sure. I'm not sure that I'm even going to put folds on. But it has, if nothing else, removed a little bit of that white there. And I now need to do the same on this side because there would be hair there. Now there's nothing heavy, once again, there's nothing heavy about this uh, shading because I don't want to draw attention to it but when it's not there, that is another way of drawing attention to something um, by its absence. So it's slightly fragmented, which helps to make it a little bit more interesting. And because I'm getting it fragmented all over the place, I'm going to calm it down just a little bit by coming in with a heavier, more controlled area. And then fragment it out. Right, so you can see that, that that is a little bit more controlled than that area there. I might strengthen that up when I come to do my final ticks. I, I, I don't know yet at this moment in time. Just quietened off a little bit of that uh, yellow up there. Okay, right, that's about it. Um, I'm going to let that dry, then make a start on the hair. But before getting my brushes wet on the hair, it's not, a, once I've said this once before, it's not enough just to sit and watch this old boy paint. Um, you have to have a little bit more understanding of uh, my thinking in as much as one can uh, in order to understand what it is I'm actually trying to achieve here and how I'm actually going about it. So let me give you a little bit of technical information here. Right now there is, uh, apart from the actual painting and the colours, uh, there is always composition on a, on a picture. So look, imagine I've got a canvas here or a piece of paper. And I've got my object, in this particular case it's a face, but I'm just going to simplify this just a little bit. Just supposing it was a very simple vase or vase of flowers. It is uh, fairly normal uh, when you first get started in order that you will tend to put the vase in the centre. And this is very, very common uh, with early painters 
they put a flower in, right? And they, they might put a second flower in. And then they're looking for space, so they tend to counterbalance. In other words, look, I've got these two. And they may tend to even go up the centre, or almost up the centre. And they all oh, look, I've got a space, so they put another one in there, which is really counterbalancing this. So now you've got a, a, a strange situation, it doesn't matter how good your painting is, when you divide it down the centre, you've got mirror image going on. That side is a mirror image of that side. Uh, and it is quite serious when it comes to the actual pot. Okay, look, I accept the fact you could put shade in on one side of the pot. That will help the situation. But invariably, you don't have the pot floating around, so you then tend to put it on the table. Now, that mirror image... It's not just the shape of this pot, it is this shape. That shape is a mirror image of that shape, albeit that the colours are different. So now I've got a situation where the self same thing can be said of a head. So I put the head in the centre and I put the neck on. Now, now look, that's almost the pot upside down, OK? But you then put on your shoulders. Uh, now, you put two eyes on, two ears, a nose down the centre, and you've got your mouth. When I actually divide that down the centre, that is now a mirror image of that side, and that is going to run you into all sorts of problems. So, it is much better if you're going to do um, a head, or even a vase of flowers, put the head slightly to one side, and bring one shoulder forward, the other one back. So now when I divide that down now, I haven't got that mirror image. And it is very, very helpful on the eyes themselves. Because they are different. Whereas on here, they're, they're twin eyes. And you, it will help you with the nose. And you'll only have one ear. So you've managed to avoid, by that process, you've managed to avoid that um, mirror image situation and you can shade down one side of the face much easier if the head is slightly turned. But just, just a word of warning there, if you do do this, keep the back of the head closer to the edge of your paper or your canvas because if you go the other way around and you bring that... Uh, too close on this on the side of the face and give it room at the back there it will look as though the person has moved forward in order to smell the frame right so it's like having your face up against the wall so if you do that um, leave as much space or the larger space in front of the eyes rather than the back of the head well, I think uh, uh, I've um, got over what I'm trying to say. So when it comes uh, down to the, 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 the picture I'm painting, the angle is not a wise one, but um, let me just bring my painting back. I'm back now on my uh, painting, and you can actually see, look, if, if I put my pencil down the centre there, right, I've got this mirror imaging which is going on here. I've got two eyes and the big problem with two eyes head on is that one eye will always come out fractionally better than the other eye. And you start looking at the one which you're not particularly happy with and you start getting a little bit down and a bit depressed about that. So if this was a boy, I would certainly not be painting it head on and it her. Uh, so in this particular case, because it is uh, a girl, she's got girly hair, so that I can bring some of this flyaway hair fractionally over one of the eyes. Now the moment I do that, that will stop that mirror imaging going on. So when it uh, comes to counterbalancing these eyes, I will be coming down fairly deep on this side, deeper than on this side than what I will on that side, because if I come in just equally, 
down in these sections. I've now got a sort of four square, so that I also need to avoid. And I will counterbalance some of this by my tones on the hair on this side and possibly coming down darker on this side. I will make my decisions as I go. One other thing is it's not a wise thing uh, to do a portrait with the mouth open because you've got teeth and teeth will always tend to look a little bit like tombstones but in this case they're only little milk teeth and look it's too late I've already painted it I can't say close your mouth darling um, I'm struggling with your teeth so let's go with what I've got right now I'm now about to get uh, involved with the hair and look here's my palette once again and on here I said I've got yellow ochre I've got um, pile cadmium yellow or lemon yellow and I've also got a sienna on there but in reality I don't really think I'm going to be using that but I've got my umber but if I mix my umber with my um, ochre it will give me a, a sienna style colour anyway so before I get underway I'm going to turn this round in favour of the camera so you can see look there, is, there are distortions going on here and I will be swinging my board around quite a lot I will try to keep my head out of the way in as much as I can All right now I'm going to start with uh, what I know uh, and I do know I need a darker tone down the side of the face but I also know that, as I explained to you in uh, part one, I do not want a sharp line around the edge of the face. So I've just added a little touch of water there. And I will let that go off damp, so that when I come back with the darker tones, uh, I won't get that hard edge, I'll get a slightly um, fuzzy edge on there um, to give the vibration of the hair and the actual face. Right now, I'll start at the top here. I'm just wetting it down. I'm not dragging it around all over the place there, by the way. And I'm just going to come down with a little bit of uh, umber wash could be a little stronger than that. There we go. An umber wash coming down there now. Okay, look, it's running around just a little bit, but uh, it doesn't matter at this stage. Now, this can be a very relaxing time um, of your painting. Because, look, the yellow which I put on there is in actual fact an underpainting. Whereas on the actual flesh, I put on an um, underpainting of uh, warm grey and painted over the top. In this case, I'm going almost the opposite way round. Trying to find the ear. I almost lost it. It's there. I think, yeah. There's the ear. Um, and look, I've got a smaller brush. And what I can actually do is, look, I can run the smaller brush through there and remove. And by that process of removing, I can manage to get one or two little highlights on there. Um which you'll see me do. So I'm going to carry on talking and painting at the same time here. And then I will drop into a bit of speed painting. Because in reality, uh, I won't be painting this in one hit. I'll, be, I'll keep stopping and um, moving off. And I don't really know how long this is going to actually take me. Right, yeah, I, I've just brought that down by the side of the face there. 
because I will be making decisions all the time. Um, what is what I've got and how I can best use it. So if I do go into speed painting, um, there's nothing wrong with that um, because there is nothing to stop you going on to freeze. So you can actually freeze and look at anything which, uh, which you might find of interest. It's too wet up there at the moment, so let's move around here. I was very tempted to, uh, I'm going to come across here a bit more, I think. As I said, look, I've, um, I underpainted the, um, the flesh. And I can't have a hard line there because I'll come back with a wash on there at some point. And in reality, what I can actually do is look, I can add on a big blob of paint. Let it more or less get to damp. And then I can remove some of those blobs. So I could virtually blob my way all the way down there and paint in reverse. In other words, instead of putting paint on, I'm taking paint off. And so every now and again, I will stop the speed painting when I'm about to do some of that. And I, I, as I said, look, I'm going to come across that eye. And this is going to be just a little bit dicey. Where to come over? Uh, certainly here. And this is one of the reasons why uh, I'm, I'm very tempted to put the highlights in. But I don't know where that hair is going to come across the actual eye. So therefore I've got a sort of strange situation where if the hair is across the eye ball Oh, that was brave. If the hair is across the eyeball, uh, it will be in shade, so therefore I won't get that um, highlight. And if I put the highlight in now with a little bit of Chinese white, I might just end up by dragging it up. Right, now I've also said to you earlier on that uh, I've got to bear in mind hair comes over the top. So the hair below, which is coming off the front of the head, will tend to come down and the hair which is coming back from uh, a little further back will sort of overlap it. Sounds very complex, doesn't it? But it's just something which you need to keep in your mind all the time. Uh, I've just mixed a little bit of my ochre into my amber and I'm going to do a brave thing now here because I want to get some of this um, in early. Let's use a little brush. No, I'm actually rehearsing. And I'm 
I've gone in very soft because I can always come back. Now this piece of hair will come underneath this section which is uh, running over the top there. So I'm going to put that in now and I've just picked up a little bit of water. I'm just going to water it back because I want to get that light here and then come back just a little bit on the heavy side. In other words the hair is coming out uh, up from under there, it's going over the top. And then turning back in. So where it goes back in it will be a little bit darker. There. Oh that's a bit odd at the end of the uh, eyebrow. Not quite. Right now I'll come back on that bit and I'm about to do another bit because I want some to come from under the hair. Where, 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 where? Fairly high up I think. There we are, running back. That section there. Now it looks very dark at the moment but it's not that dark. Um, it's only because it's up against the flesh. I've just hit that with a little bit of water. I don't want these to come over like bits of cotton. Um, and as I come over here I will twist my brush just a little bit. Right, while you're watching me do this, time for one of my little uh, stories. This painting of very young children um, not is not everybody's cup of tea, this one, by the way. Because when you come to do painting, you will have a tendency to be better at um, males than females, or vice versa. That doesn't mean to say that you can't paint um, males and females, you can do whatever you want to do. It's just that you will have a tendency to move in certain areas. And children painting is probably the hardest one of them uh, because they haven't got those lovely textures on, on, on the skin so therefore you've got to keep everything new and my younger sister who happens to be a very good artist by the way um, she was working at a holiday camp um, doing portraits in pastels and you have to uh, be able to knock them out sort of one every half an hour so you can get sort of 20 minutes on 20 minutes off and then you do another 20 minutes and she was working with a, a team of four and so therefore it meant to say that there was always two on at any one given time and you'd have a female painter, when I say a painter of females, and you'd have a male painter, and as the clients come in, they would go to the right artist for the job. And one of the problems is that a, um, a couple came in, and they wanted a uh, a double portrait. Double portraits are always very, very hard to do because it doesn't matter what you do, one is going to be better than the other. And 
that in itself can run you into problems. And later on in life, it may well be that the uh, might be brother and sister or brother and brother, they split up. Is the argument is now who's going to have the portrait? Um, I'm getting away from what I was talking about. When they did this double portrait of this young couple, uh, off they went, very happy. But later on in the evening, Granny came back <laughs> and she was really not very, very happy. And she says, look, uh, I, li I quite like Susan and George, whoever they were, but what's with this baby? Because they were holding a baby on the portrait. And she said, little George, he looks like a pig in a blanket. <laughs> It's because there were no baby painters amongst this team. Um, so they were struggling with that one. And they said, OK, look, leave it with us. I'm going to have a look at it. And the team had a look and they waited till the other team arrived. And they... All four of them had a go at this thing and they really couldn't do very much with it. Um, so when the granny came back, they had to give her her money back. <laughs> right, now, you can't be everything. You'll get landscape painters and portrait painters, male painters. Uh, I, I I suppose I don't know what this says about me, but I'm a painter of fairies. I'm going to stop this chat and I'm going to move into speed painting and I will come back when there's something relevant. Um, and it's like I say, I will be taking mini breaks because I need to go off, come back and look at it with fresh eyes to see what I've got. Um, I'm just going to come around that ear now. I'm going to leave a little bit of that exposed ear just, just in there. but I can come in just a little deeper here. Look, even though there's nothing there at the moment, I'm still being quite selective. With what I'm doing and if I do mess up, it's, it really is no big problem because what I can actually do, uh, let me look for a, a spot. Uh, look, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this uh, area, let's say around here. No, over here because this is a proof of point. That I can put on a blob of water, I can just ease it back. Look, and remove it because of my underpainting on there. So, if I do come back and have a look at something and I'm unhappy with something, I'll just simply remove it and repaint it again. Right, now, I'm now going to move on to a bit of speed painting. And remember, you can always hit the pause button and it will give you a still shot of what you're looking at. Right, just before I do, look, this hair there, which is coming out from under there, coming out and then it's sort of curling back. Where it's coming out into the light, I've just added a little tiny bit of water to it. Let me zoom that in very close now. Look, I've just added a little bit of tiny water to it. And then just lift that centre section off. Now, it means to say, look, it's got just that little bit lighter 
there. So I've got a little bit lighter there. Later on I'll come back a little bit darker at the top and at the actual bottom so that will look as though it's springing out. Right now I have just uh, uploaded that clip um, onto my computer and I can see that I am actually running out of time very rapidly. So I'm not going to go into speed painting. I'm just going to continue um, fiddling around here and then I will take this into part four. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just getting rid of that um, halo um, effect she has around her head. and before closing this section up and I, look I'm just got that area there which I cleaned up I've just gone over it again and that that is what you can do you can put on take off as you go and don't know how I'm going to start off part four. I can't go straight into uh, speed painting. Right, now I'm just going to remove. As I did over there, I'm going to remove a little bit of this out of here. And I'm also, let me get my other brush. Um, I've just lifted a little bit off that section there. I don't want it too heavy just there. And I might just take back that little section there. So when I do, look, I'm going to put on... I, I will be coming back with some um, warm grey there, by the way. But look, I'm just going to put on a little bit of water. So this is just another little bit of information for you. And... I won't wash that out because I don't want it to go into the flesh. So I've got a little bit of water and look, I'm just rolling my brush back again, rolling it out. Very, very gently just remove that little section there without it interfering with the flesh. And then look, I'm coming back and I'll just lift that off. So look, I've removed a little section there without damaging um, uh, the, f the, fl the flesh there. Right now I've still got a lot of decisions to make here. So before I get started on uh, part four, I will stop, look, paint with my eyes and think about what it is I'm about to do. Because when I first start, I know roughly where I want to go, but I don't really quite know what I'm going to be doing until I've got something there. Uh, it may be right, it may be wrong, but it's something on which I can make another decision. In other words, this is a living, growing bit of work. And one thing which I will do is that I don't want everything samey. So, uh, in other words, look, I've got these flyaway bits of hair, but I want some calmer areas. So I will be dropping this sort of thing in. So it doesn't look just like spaghetti all over the place. So I'm looking for variety. Um, right, I've got one coming down there, I've got one coming there. I need to figure out which one is going to cross which there. 
uh, I think this one will cross over over this one uh, because that is springing out from the head just a little more and they're the sort of decisions which when you come to do yours only you can make because yours will be different a different head as much as anything else um, right, I want some more depth in here okay folks so I'm gonna leave you here at this point um, I won't be doing anything um, in between when I say in between I won't be doing anything which you don't see so time for you to go off once again back into your little darkened room and I will see you on part three he says still fiddling on here sorry part four okay now I've got my brushes wet and I'm in the flow I want to keep going just for a moment so time for another, another quick story <laughs> I will try and make it quick. A colleague, and I'm talking about painters again here, you see. Uh, a, a colleague of mine, who's a marine architect, and a very talented um, marine artist, met a young lady sitting next to him on one of the flights over to Holland. Um, they got chatting and... Um, she told him she was a model and he said he was a painter and she was very interested and said uh, well maybe you'd like to paint me sometime right. so being a bit of a chance so he says yeah okay fine um, and they exchanged uh, <coughs> information <coughs> so when they got back to London he contacted her and <clears throat> made arrangements to meet her up in her Chelsea flat to do her portrait and he never told her that he was a marine painter and <laughs> not a, a, a portrait painter that when he got this underway, a couple of weeks later he came down to see me and said, look Barry, I'm in a bit of trouble here. Um, what do you think? And showed me the portrait. Well, there she was, stripped down to the waist and all this lovely sort of um, curtains and material around her waist. And it was absolutely great but uh he, i said well what happened uh, with her with her face and body it looks as though uh, you've uh, painted her with spanners right? because he was very very good at, sh at wooden ships with sails and iron ships but uh not so au fait with the body so he said can you help me out here so he showed me uh, her, some pictures from her portfolio 
and I sat down with him and tried to give him some a few pointers. Which you can't do in a rush, but nevertheless I did it. And he took the painting back and pretended he was painting it. When when uh, it was finally finished, I, I had four goes at this by the way. Uh, when it was finally finished, she was so impressed she wanted another one. And this time she prepared to pay. <laughs> so I said, sorry, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> so he said, look, I'll pay you. So I said, no, 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 right, you're on your own. <laughs> so there was nothing wrong with him as a, as a marine painter. He could do sails and iron ships beautifully, but uh, humans, not so. So we can't be everything we want to be. That does not mean that uh, he should not be painting humans, uh, because we all like the challenge, but uh, not expect to get paid for it. <laughs> okay, you want to stop the chat? Move on. Bye-bye, folks. Enjoy.